Hello and welcome to another 3D printing video. So today I'll be unboxing the Voxlab Ares. So here's all the tools that the Ares ships with. If you look down here on the side, it tells you to flip the switch to make sure you're set to the correct voltage setting. They provide a sample of filament, but I never use this stuff. I'm going to just go ahead and use my Overture Gray PLA filament. This is really high quality filament and I totally recommend it. Overture's been making filament for 3D printers for a really long time and they've gotten pretty good at it. Alright, and after it's done playing its little song, I guess we're ready to print. Actually, I just found the USB drive. It's right here inside of this instruction manual packet. I usually throw the instruction manual away without reading it, but it's a good thing that I checked because they might have some precise models on here. All right, I want to show you this touch screen because actually it's pretty sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and just start some of these prints. So we'll go to our USB device, load up our models, and I'll run the test print first, and then I'll do some of these hooks and bearings and stuff. Let's go print. All right, so the fan just turned on, the uh, bed finished heating up, and now the hot end is heating up. One nice thing about this machine is the fan doesn't turn on until it's started printing, which is a feature that's missing in most 3D printers. This helps keep the machine quiet when it's not doing anything. All right, so according to our information screen, uh, this is what our print's gonna look like when we're done. This is how long it's gonna take. The bed leveling looks like it's spot on, which is nice because if you're new to 3D printing, the bed leveling can be kind of intimidating. So I'm about 10 feet away from the printer, and this is what it sounds like. Alright, so I just printed out this bearing. It's okay. So I just turned the hot end on, and the fan just fired up. And that's a pretty loud fan. You're definitely going to want to replace this fan with a quieter one. And I just happen to have a quieter 24 volt fan that I want to throw on here. So let's see how easy this machine is to mod. I also like to upgrade all my printers with all metal hot ends whenever possible. So I'm going to be installing this on this machine, along with that quieter fan. This machine comes with a nice set of Allen wrenches, so I'll be using these to do my modifications and I'll hold on to them later because it's always nice having a nice little kit like this. This isn't the first printer that I've taken apart that has a little PCB on the hot end like this to help facilitate all the connections. It actually makes your machines easier to mod because when you add or change something, you don't have to run the wire all the way back down into the main board. You just have to plug it in to the correct spot up here. I'm going to undo these two screws that are holding this fan on, and then I'll just pull this fan off. Alright, and just like that I've removed the loudest fan on this machine. Now I can go ahead and replace it with this quieter fan, so I'll just plug this in. Just like that. If you just want to make your printer run a little bit quieter, you can stop here, put it back together, and start printing with it again. But I'm also going to replace the hot end. I'm going to cut these wires and put new terminations on them. Alright, so I just tidied up my wiring a little bit. Alright, so I just opened up the back. It was easy enough to do. There's just five screws on the bottom. While we're down here, let's look at the rest of the electronics. Starting with the motherboard. So the motherboard has heat sinks on all the important components and the wire management is nice and tidy. We've also got our Z-axis stepper driver down here, a Meanwell power supply, and then over here on the left you can see the backside of the touchscreen. So hooking this up to Wi-Fi was a little more difficult than I wanted it to be. You can see here when I'm in the Wi-Fi password enter menu, um, when I push buttons, you see I just pressed the four once, but it put two fours there. So when you're typing in a long wireless password, it can be pretty frustrating. So after trying four times to enter my wireless password unsuccessfully, I was able to enter it by using one of these Allen keys and just tapping on the buttons that I wanted to hit. And that was able to work very reliably. Now that all these fans are taken care of, let me turn the hot end on again and see if it's making that horrible noise. Alright, so my hot end heatsink fan just turned on. It's nice and quiet. And the fan underneath the printer is also on and it's running nice and quietly too. Alright, now I think the Wi-Fi is working, so when I go to upgrade, it's found a new version of the firmware, so I'll go ahead and install that. Yes, thank you for completing the update. Go away now. So I'm now coming to the realization that this machine really isn't as customizable as I thought it would be. So that means it's going to be really difficult, if not impossible, to reconfigure a lot of things on this machine, including the E-steps, the PID tuning, and a lot of other settings. So with that realization, I'm going to have to switch back to the old hot end. I still want to do an all metal hot end, so I'll be putting this all metal hot end upgrade in there. 
Another issue that I had on my Voxlab Aquila that I was hoping that they would have fixed on this machine is the PTFE tube wasn't pushed all the way down against this nozzle when it was installed. So plastic can kind of sit in there and become carbonized over time due to the heat. In my case, I'm going to be replacing this PTFE hot end with this all metal hot end and I'll make sure there isn't a gap when I install mine. Another thing that could be improved upon is these tinned tips. They really should have crimped ferrule ends. I'm printing that gear again, so I'll be able to compare the quality before I made these modifications and after. So even after replacing the fans, this machine's still pretty loud. And most of it comes down to the extruder motor. But if I just press down over here and kind of damp those vibrations out with my hands, it gets a lot quieter. So I think the issue with this machine is there's some kind of resonance being set up in this back part of the chamber. So the back part of this printer is acting like a guitar body. It's amplifying sound. But unlike a guitar, which is amplifying the sound of someone trying to play a nice song, this is amplifying the sound of a stepper motor, which is less pleasant. All right, so we got the old printed gears on the right and the new printed gears on the left. I'd say the one that was printed on the all metal hot end turned out a little bit nicer than this other one. Though visually, there's not a whole lot to tell these two apart. So I just removed this back panel. Overall, the wire management is pretty good back here. On the left, you can see the Y-axis stepper motor. And here's the extruder that's been making all that noise. And the frame is resonating with the frequency of this stepper's vibration. So the issue is that this frame is tuned to an audible frequency. So the solutions here are to make it much stiffer, like when you hit two metal objects together. Makes a very high frequency noise. Or if you hit two soft objects together, it makes a low frequency noise. But this plastic housing is right in the middle where it's producing noise in the audible spectrum. So it's really loud. I'm gonna fix this by adding dampers So I just finished adding rubber in three places. One in the back here, one right here, and one over here. And that should help isolate the motor from the rest of the frame so that it doesn't get so loud when it's doing retractions. So we've quieted this machine down enough that I'd be comfortable leaving it running in my office. All we had to do is change two of the fans out and add some damping to the extruder mount. Alright, so we finished our range of test prints and let's take a closer look at them now. So moving from left to right, we have our test print that came on the card. We have a couple bearings that I printed and this hook that came pre-sliced on the printer. I then printed two benchies, one using the Voxel Maker slicer provided from Voxel Lab and another using Prusa slicer using the settings that I use on most of my other printers. For all of these comparisons, I'll keep the Voxel Maker Benchy on the left and the Prusa Slicer Benchy on the right. So overall, the Prusa Slicer Benchy has much better quality all around. If you look closely at the Benchy sliced on Voxel Maker, you'll notice that there's these small gaps where the lines don't quite come together. This could seriously reduce the strength of a part printed with these settings. Also, if you look at some of the overhangs, they are not quite as clean as the model that I sliced in Prusa Slicer. So here and here, you can see that the overhanging features are a little messy. If we look at the Benchy that was printed with my favorite settings on Prusa Slicer, you'll notice it doesn't have those gaps where those lines don't quite come together. Also, the areas with overhangs look a little bit neater. Again, looking at overhanging features, you can see there's a little distortion on the bow of the Benchy that was printed with the stock slicer settings. The bow is slightly deformed, and that's because it was curling as I was printing it. But when you take a step back and look at these benches side by side, I'd consider both of these to be of excellent quality. It was a little difficult to get this set up to print with Prusa Slicer, because the machine isn't configured the same as an Ender 3 or most of the other common printers on the market. Instead of using relative coordinates to tell the extruder how far to move, it uses absolute coordinates. Most slicers output your G-code to use relative coordinates by default, but by checking an option, you can switch it to absolute coordinates. The difference between relative and absolute coordinates is that with absolute coordinates, you're telling the extruder motor what position to be in relative to when the print started. So if your entire print uses 20 meters of filament, your last line of G-code will say something like 20 meters on the extruder axis. 
With relative extruder positioning, the G-code is just telling the extruder how much filament to extrude for the current line or command. Most printers will support both relative and absolute extruder positioning, and it can be toggled between the two using a G-code command. But as far as I can tell, the VoxLab Ares only supports absolute extruder positioning. Another thing that was slightly different compared to other 3D printers is that the zero position for the X and Y axis is in the middle of the print bed. Compared to most other machines like the Prusa i3 Mark III, where the X and Y zero position is above the bottom left corner of the print bed. So now that we've looked at the build and print quality of this machine, I'm going to go over the pros, cons, and who I think this printer would be good for. My number one favorite feature is that it's pre-assembled and ready to print out of the box, which is great for someone who has never 3D printed before. It's also got a fast, simple, easy to use touchscreen. The included Voxel Maker software was very easy to set up and use for this printer, and once you set up the Wi-Fi, starting a print job becomes very simple. Also, I appreciated how the electronics and wiring was very clean and well organized. Now I'll go over some of the weak points of this machine. While the firmware to control the machine is very nice and easy to use, and has some nice features like being able to preview the models before you print them, overall I wasn't the biggest fan of it. And that's because it's missing a lot of features that other open source options like Marlin and RepRap have. And most printers in general will have a lot of these commands that are just completely absent on this machine. So to start, there's no way to adjust the E-steps on this machine. So if your extruder is out of calibration and is extruding too much or too little, you have to account for that in your slicer settings. Another missing feature is the ability to do PID auto-tuning, or to change the PID values for the heaters on this printer at all. This means you're pretty much stuck with the stock hot end. Though, as I demonstrated, you can change the heat breakout for an all-metal version. Although it has a USB port, when I used the cable to plug this into my computer, I couldn't communicate with the printer over serial. And that severely limits the ways that you can interact with this machine. While this is a more advanced feature that not every user will miss, it can be extremely helpful for troubleshooting a printer or increasing its capabilities by adding something like a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint onto the printer. A lot of these issues could be fixed by Voxlab by releasing a version of Marlin firmware that's designed to run on this machine. But it seems unlikely that they'll do that at this point in time. This machine simplifies the printing process in a lot of ways. So for an absolute beginner, it might be a good choice. But for someone like myself, or someone who likes modding printers a lot, I wouldn't recommend it, simply because you can't change the extruder, you can't change the hot end, and there's a lot of things in the firmware that are locked down that you can't adjust. I would instead recommend the Voxlab Aquila. And that's because the Voxlab Aquila is cheaper, quieter, still gets great print quality, and is more moddable because the firmware and mechanical design are more conventional. I could still recommend this printer if you already have an Ender 3 or Voxlab Aquila and want something a little bit different. There's a number of interesting features on this machine that I'm going to be exploring in a future video. One of those features is that it's almost completely enclosed already, so I just need to get a couple of side panels and put them on here, which will allow me to get better results when I'm printing ABS and nylon. Also, I like how the printing platform only moves up and down, which makes it much easier to get good results when filming time lapses. And I'll wrap this up by saying the number one reason why I'll continue to use this machine is because the print quality is excellent, even in its stock form. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something about the Voxlab Ares. If you have any questions or comments about this machine, hit me up in the comments section. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Four, five. Oh, they just typed in a bunch of sixes, typed in a bunch of sevens. <laughs>